in the parched dust of the Thar Desert, beneath layers of forgotten civilizations, scientists have uncovered something no one expected. Not a relic, not a scroll, but a fragment of DNA preserved through millennia, silent until now. This isn't just an ancient sample. It's a genetic fingerprint, one that echoes not only through the history of South Asia, but through the pages of the Bible itself. As archaeologists brushed away the sands of time, they had no idea that buried within ancient bones lay a secret that would challenge everything we thought we knew about the origin of the Indian people. Was it possible? Could sacred texts, ancient migrations, and modern genetics all collide into a single shocking revelation? How did a DNA strand link India's deep past to the ancient Near East? And what forgotten story was waiting to be told? The answer is more astonishing than anyone imagined. Could the true origin of the Indian people be hidden in biblical history? For centuries, the Indian subcontinent has been a mosaic of civilizations. Indus Valley engineers, Vedic sages, Mauryan emperors. Its timeline stretches back over 5,000 years, across deserts, rivers, and empires. But for all the grandeur of its temples and the complexity of its languages, one question has remained unanswered. Where did the first Indians truly come from? Was their origin local? Or were they shaped by ancient migrations, perhaps even by peoples mentioned in biblical texts? Historical records speak in fragments. Myths of kings from the West, tales of sages who crossed mountains, and linguistic traces that seem to stretch from the Middle East to the banks of the Ganges. But myths alone are not enough. What India lacked was a genetic mirror to look back through time. In the early 2000s, with the rise of genome sequencing, researchers began assembling a genetic atlas of the Indian population. What they found didn't just rewrite a few chapters, it questioned the entire book. The genetic markers hinted at a dual ancestry, a fusion of ancient local hunter-gatherers and a mysterious population with connections far beyond the subcontinent. Where had these outsiders come from? And why did their DNA match patterns found in biblical lands? The first real crack in the story appeared not in a temple, but in a grave. In the dusty plains of Rakhigari, Haryana, one of the oldest known urban sites of the Indus Valley civilization, archaeologists unearthed an unusually well-preserved skeleton. It belonged to a woman buried over 4,500 years ago surrounded by the remains of a lost world. But it wasn't the artifacts that sparked global attention. It was what lay inside her bones, intact DNA, untouched by time. Ancient DNA in India is rare. The subcontinent's tropical climate usually destroys genetic material. But this burial was different. The soil, the positioning, the microenvironment, it had protected her genetic code like a time capsule. When scientists extracted her DNA, they hoped for clues about the early inhabitants of South Asia. What they found was something much bigger. Her genetic profile lacked one crucial component, a component present in most modern Indians. That missing piece hinted at a later arrival, a second wave of people whose origins lay not in the East, but in the West. This discovery would set off a chain reaction linking India's prehistory to migrations from the ancient steppe and, possibly, to biblical figures once thought to be myth. To trace the origin of this mysterious second population, scientists turned to the most advanced tools of modern genetics. Using whole genome sequencing and ancient DNA comparison, they mapped out thousands of genetic samples from tribal villages in India to burial sites in Iran, Central Asia, and the Caucasus. The patterns were unmistakable. Sometime around 2000 BCE, a new genetic signature appeared in the Indian gene pool. It carried markers found in Bronze Age steppe populations, 
specifically the Yamnaya culture of the Pontic Caspian region. These were pastoral nomads, known for horse riding, early chariots, and, most importantly, language. That same genetic signature was also found in groups that migrated to the Near East, regions tied to the earliest chapters of the Bible. The evidence suggested a massive movement of people, spanning thousands of miles and reshaping the very core of South Asian identity. But it wasn't just about genes. Linguists noticed that the Vedic Sanskrit of ancient India bore deep similarities to early Indo-European languages spoken in Anatolia and Mesopotamia. Could it be that the ancient hymns of India and the verses of the Bible had common roots? Or perhaps common ancestors? The pieces were coming together. But to prove this theory, one critical element was still missing. Scientific proof of how and when these lineages converged. The breakthrough came when geneticists combined ancient DNA from Rakigari with genome data from over 500 modern and ancient populations across Eurasia. Through a process called admixture modeling, they identified two major ancestral components in most modern Indians, the ancient ancestral South Indians, AASI, and a second lineage closely tied to the Iranian Neolithic farmers and steppe pastoralists. But what shocked researchers most was the timeline. The genetic influx from the steppe aligned almost perfectly with the estimated arrival of Indo-Aryan languages in India, around 1500 BCE. More than that, these same steppe lineages had already appeared earlier in the Middle East, in regions described in biblical accounts, like Canaan and Mesopotamia. One haplogroup stood out, R1A1A, a paternal genetic marker found in high frequency among both Brahmin communities in India and ancient populations of Eastern Europe and the Near East. This marker, long debated, now served as a genetic thread connecting priestly castes of India with nomadic tribes who once roamed lands spoken of in Genesis. This wasn't coincidence. This was convergence, science and scripture, pointing to the same ancestral bridge, a forgotten migration hiding in plain sight. The data was clear. The roots of many Indian lineages could be traced to ancient peoples whose footsteps echo through both Vedic hymns and biblical verses. Around 2000 BCE, as civilizations in Mesopotamia rose and fell, great changes stirred across the Eurasian steppes. Climate shifts, resource scarcity, and social upheaval pushed waves of Indo-European-speaking peoples eastward. Among them were the Indo-Aryans, pastoralists skilled in animal husbandry, chariot warfare, and oral tradition. They carried no written texts, only songs, rituals, and a memory of a sky filled with gods. They crossed the harsh terrains of modern-day Iran, passed through mountain valleys, and eventually descended into the fertile lands of the Indian subcontinent. As they arrived, they didn't find empty lands. The Indus Valley civilization, though in decline, still pulsed with urban sophistication. Yet the two worlds, one agrarian and urban, the other nomadic and spiritual, began to merge, not through conquest alone, but through centuries of cultural fusion intermarriage, and transmission of ideas. The Indo-Aryans brought with them the early seeds of Sanskrit, the foundations of the Vedas, and genetic lineages that would blend with the ancient Dravidian populations already rooted in the land. Over generations, their rituals became the hymns of the Rigveda. Their gods absorbed into the Hindu pantheon, and their bloodlines etched into the very genome of the Indian people. And all of it, every step of that long migration, now mirrored by a genetic trail that reaches back to lands described in the earliest stories of the Bible. Today, the question of identity, who we are and where we come from, is more than cultural. It's genetic. The discovery of ancient DNA in India has not only redrawn the map of human migration, 
it has unearthed a forgotten bridge between civilizations, a connection between the hymns of the Rig Veda and the genealogies of Genesis, between the high priests of ancient Varanasi and the patriarchs who once walked the deserts of Canaan. This isn't about rewriting history. It's about seeing it more clearly. The Indian people, like all of humanity, are not born of one root, but many. Carriers of memory, migration, and myth. From the sands of the Thar to the scrolls of the Bible, the story has always been there, waiting, silent, buried in the blood, and now, finally revealed. If this story made you question everything you thought you knew about ancient history, don't stop here. Subscribe for more untold stories where science meets legend and the past comes alive. The next great discovery may already be hidden beneath our feet.